Hey everyone, welcome back to Bear's Workshop. In today's video, we are going to be putting together this Stronghold 10 by 8 shed. You can see a picture of it here on the side that we got at Home Depot. We will provide a link at the bottom and let's get to it. Okay everyone, so what we've got today is a Stronghold 10 by 8 shed, as I just had said and we've got a, we've got all the parts here in our boxes we've got our area that we want to put it in and the first step what i did was i downloaded the instruction instruction manual off of home depot's site so i could see what i need before i pretended to start doing this and not having what i need uh, so as always what we're going to do is we're going to go through the instructions um, step by step we're going to do this in the simplest way so no matter what your skill level is, you're gonna understand. I'm not gonna use any big words. This is gonna be the no big word channel. Just wanna make everything as easy to understand. So if you bought this and you've got questions, you're gonna be able to probably get your answers. And if you haven't bought this yet, you'll see whether or not this is something for you. So we've got our uh, instructions, which I'm gonna splash up here so that you can only see this, uh, this page. But on, on this page, it tells you that you gotta have a foundation, otherwise your warranty is going to be void. Well, we're gonna put a foundation. Uh, it gives you a choice of concrete or uh, wood. So we're not going concrete, because I figured the cost on that would be very expensive. We'd need about a, a full cubic yard of uh, concrete, and then we'd have to put it in. I'm not prepared to do that. Uh, so we're going to use the, they recommend uh, two by six by 10 treated wood with three quarter inch, four by eight treated plywood. And then they recommend some screws for you also. And then they show you the, the plan on what it's supposed to look like. Uh, in this particular case, we are, we're dumbing this down. The, uh, two by six and three quarter inch treated plywood. First of all, I could find treated plywood that was three quarter inch that didn't cost less than, I think it was $70 a sheet which is extremely expensive. So we went with half inch. We are only putting in this shed uh, blow up toys, cushions, maybe a chair or two. We're putting nothing heavy in here. So we are not gonna go with the three quarter inch plywood. We are gonna go with half inch plywood. And we're also uh, dumbing it down a little bit. We're going to two by four instead of two by six. Um, also for the, for the same reason, we're, we're just not having a lot of weight and it just does not seem necessary uh, if i void my warranty I, okay well so be it um but the area that we're going to be putting it down in uh does is not going to get a lot of water especially after it's been raised up i know we, we i do get some water here but it rains every six months here so i don't even really need treated plywood i almost used some old pallets that i had but we're using the treated wood uh we're going to be fine with that whatever you use you got to base it on the conditions in your area. So let's go take a look and see where we're putting this. And then we're going to, we're going to move these boxes. We're going to get the tractor in here. We're going to level out this ground. Okay. So this is the corner where we are going to put the stronghold shed and we're going to clear this out. We're going to start leveling this out here in a moment and we're going to use the tractor to do it. But you can use anything that you, you, you can like slave labor from kids and things like that. Uh, I m might use a little bit of slave labor, but they're not very reliable. So anyway, there's the box over there. Zoom in on that. Gotta love the way they have the uh, shed on the side of you. Stack the boxes correctly, four boxes. Not that heavy, one box was, but the rest weren't too bad. And right here, eight by 10, we're gonna clear that out now.
Okay, everyone, it's a couple days later. I uh, got everything done with the base, as you saw. We're about to open up these boxes. Uh, I've got my tools that I need. I looked at the next page of instructions, recommended tools. Uh, Phillips uh, flathead, uh, 7 16 wrench, uh, adjustable wrench, uh, level, things like that. I've got that all behind me. We're gonna open up the first box. I know the first thing that we're gonna be doing is putting together the floor, um, which are some pieces that snap together. I'm gonna start at the top box and I'm just hoping that, we got a puppy laying in an empty pool, it's kind of funny. So I'm hoping that when I start opening these up that the pieces that I need are in the boxes, starting with number one and it's not a number four. So I don't have to lay everything out, but let's get started. I'll uh, splash up the instruction page that I'm on so you can see where I'm at on each phase. Okay, we just opened all four boxes and we went through all the stuff in there and we did not find any instructions. So now I have to go print out the instructions. So I'm not all that happy about that. I bet we're gonna find it like a wedge between one piece of wall and another piece of wall somewhere. But the instructions should be placed right on top of box number one. So when you open it up, you have what you need. They weren't there, not excited, but I gotta go get the instructions now. A few moments later. Okay, so I've printed out the first 15 pages or so because I figure at some point we're going to find the instructions buried somewhere. When I find them, I'll uh, put a little note right here. This is where the instructions were, so you can go right towards them. If there's nothing here right now, it means I never found them and it's going to be flashing. Never found them. So, starting off on pages 7 and 8, it's the floor surface uh, to lay it down and, and put it all together. So I've got my pieces out. They're spread out in several different boxes on the bottom, of course. So that's what we're doing on our first step, pages seven and eight. Okay, on the base of this, there are some screws that need to go in and that's where they're gonna hold all of these together. So make sure you get your screws in. When you're installing your first wall pieces, you'll see that you have a, a plastic screw and a washer. You may want to have someone hold the walls up for you as you're putting them in. Okay, so I'd want to save you five minutes of your life. Here we have a piece lettered FL. If you're looking for FR, which we couldn't find and we were looking for for five minutes, flip this over and it's FR. That's not very apparent until you're suddenly looking for your piece for five minutes and looking everywhere and then suddenly you realize they've labeled the same piece with two different letters. Okay, these are the corner tabs. They fit right here. They're gonna go in like this, and there's a little piece of plastic, a little edge here, so when you uh, push it down far enough, it's gonna click right past it. That's gonna hold the walls together on the edges. So on page 11 of the instructions, they tell you to put the shutter handles on to the shutters, and then the shutters onto the window panel. Uh, my assembly, it already came pre-installed except for the shutter handles and the shutter handles don't actually look like the picture but they have the correct marking on it and RWH is on this one and uh, that's what fits on there so some of this stuff was pre-assembled and we're just gonna snap it in and go to the next page Now, I was fortunate enough that I had a back wall there to support. Again, remember having someone hold these up so that they don't just fall off because those two plastic screws on the bottom are not gonna be enough. If you get a slight breeze, it's gonna fall over.
kick, nudge, bump. The mallet is your best friend on, the, on this build. And just get everything lined up and get your screws in. Okay, the next step is to fasten these support shelf guides of some sort onto this. There's seven of these, there's four of these. So we're gonna go ahead and drop a nut and then we're gonna connect uh, four of these and get ready for our next step. These pieces went together fairly simple. You just need your 7 16th wrench on both sides, one to screw it in, one to hold it. Uh, I'm putting the side rails into the plastic here, gives it more support, makes it more sturdy. This is also where the roof attaches to. And now the next step is putting more of these metal rods into the back. One of these rods has an extension on it and that goes up to the peak of the roof. At this point, I'm gathering up the roof support beams. These are the two pieces that are gonna go over the top and they're connected in the middle. And then I'm assembling the roof trusses. And this is just a little bit of a pain in the butt just because you have to hook up uh, like five or six different things with one screw and slide that screw through. So you just gotta get them all lined up. Getting one side of it done and then connecting it to another, to the second truss and having an uh, extra set of hands here is very helpful. Uh, you'll, you'll get it done a lot quicker. The white piece that's uh, transparent or translucent uh, to let some light in is connected last. We're now connecting the roof truss system. It's four bolts and four nuts. Uh, just slide them through, connect them up, tighten them up, and then it's off to the next step. Okay, so this is the side walls that extend up to the roof. This was five plastic pieces that we had to put together. Um, just to make it easier for you, uh, trim off any small pieces of plastic that should not be there. Uh, a lot of places where it actually connected, we had to trim off plastic. And then right around here, these didn't snap in very well. So we had to hit them with a mallet. Um, with the mallet, they snapped in, but they would not just slide in easy squeezy. So keep that in mind. Next step, we're gonna put these up. We have two of these. So we're putting up the, the side of, of the roof uh, support and uh, it on the back, it goes through that metal bar. Uh, the, there's a hole in the plastic that goes right through. Then we put up the other side. These get held together with the plastic screws and the black washers. Okay, welcome back. It's the following morning. I know it was quick for you, but I had to get some rust. Anyway, next step is we're going to attach these braces to the side walls and continue the process and get this done shortly, I hope. On this step, we're just uh, fastening the side supports uh, with screws. Couldn't get the powered screwdriver in there, so I had to use a regular screwdriver for a change. Okay, so the next step is these are supports for the wall. They slide down a slot right here. A little tricky to get them in because they don't fit exactly right. Uh, or exactly good. It's not even good grammar. All right, so they'll slide down 
we've got two screw holes here. They'll, they'll attach right here and that'll give this more stability, which honestly, it, it does need more stability. It's kind of wonky. Okay, this is the support bar that goes across the front. Uh, this is supposed to give it more rigidity, uh, even though there's not one on the back. This helps keep those three panels together. Okay, so we ran into a bit of an issue. We've got this right here, and we have this. And the roof needs to slide up the tracks, and this was in the way. We're off by another three inches. So we've slid the shed out so that we can get these pieces on and up but the uh it's a bit of a hassle and it's something that you're going to need to consider before you uh place your your shed because if it's against the wall you're never going to be able to get on without moving the shed fortunately we haven't bolted the shed down to the ground yet so we're able to slide it but there's some twisting going on and i'm a little nervous so i want to get these put on as quickly as possible and get the shed back on the foundation Okay, so this is the roof panel we're sliding up. We still have another two inches to go, and we're gonna meet the little uh, top panel. And you can see these are supposed to slide in right here. They're a little bit off, maybe an eighth of an inch, but that won't be a problem. So we're gonna push from one side while another person winds these up, and that's as far as we go for the roof. And then now we're gonna repeat with the other side, and the, and the empty side is gonna be a lot easier because we don't have anything in the way. So that's the next step. Okay, so we've got the one side up. All the pieces are slid into place. They're locked in to the white piece on the top. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the other side. Uh, we did have to use a mallet. It's very, very snug. And you just tap it with a mallet, not too hard. You don't wanna crack anything. But you gotta line up those pieces up top. You gotta line up those pieces from the roof into the peak. Uh, and that's where you're gonna really use the mallet is just tapping it in because it, it doesn't just slide in and go click like a like a Lego. It, it requires some force, just not too much. Okay, we're on our last step. We're gonna put the doors together. We just put the hinges on, the door handles, and then we're gonna hang the doors up. The last step is these. I guess slowly, so hopefully the camera will focus. There's 134 of these. They go in the little holes, and you're supposed to turn them with a flathead screwdriver. But they're so loose, you can turn them with your hands. They serve no purpose except for decoration and we're gonna put them on, but when they go in, they're loose. They don't just like, they're not snug, like some of the other things in this. So, I don't know. This is a fail of some sort. I don't know what it was supposed to do, but we'll give you a shot of a couple of them in there. And you can see how they're just hanging and you can still see the whole, kind of lame. Okay, at this point, just assembling the door hardware, uh, putting on the hinges. There's some support pieces that go on the top and the bottom and the door handle itself. Nothing overly complicated on this. And then we hang the doors. Uh, the doors themselves, they fit okay. Uh, not great. Uh, granted, this isn't, you know, a $3,000 shed. So everything's not lined up perfectly when they close, but you can get them to close. Remember to use your mallet and uh, bang those door hinges in uh, after you screw them in. They'll fit nice and snug in there. Here's the, the locking mechanism that they give with this. It's not great. Um, the only nice thing about it is that you can 
you can tie this off and keep it closed if you want so that uh, someone can't get to it. There's a space for a padlock. Uh, granted though, if uh, you do put a padlock on it, you, you could still get into this very easily by just ripping a door down. This is mostly plastic. So a lock is uh, to deter someone who's really lazy. But otherwise, uh, this door lock isn't gonna do much. Even, uh, even preventing the wind, it's not gonna do much. We have now completed the Stronghold 8x10 US Leisure Shed that we bought at Home Depot. It is complete. It was very inexpensive compared to other 8x10 sheds. So being that it was a little cheaper, it was a little cheaper. But uh, it's gonna do exactly what we needed to do. And I hope these installation instructions may have helped you or make, help you make a decision on whether or not you want this or not. So this is available at Home Depot. I'm going to provide a link in the description. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit like. If you have any questions, put them down below. Hit that subscribe button for more content in the future. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.